Welcome to The Last of Us. Now, honestly, I feel like I don't really need to say what this game is about as everybody and their mothers has played this themselves or at least seen the show. But for the few of you that might not have a clue about this game, the premise is that a virus has swept over humanity. An evolved version of the real-life fungus Cordyceps has made most people mindless zombies. We play as Joel as he is tasked with transporting Ellie, who is immune to the fungus, to a base for her to be studied for a cure. And the game is their journey in dealing with the horrific mutated fungusy boyos, bandits, the military, and everything in between. Now, one thing I must address immediately are the achievements for the game and the title of the video. Now, some of you may be shocked to read that I called this boring. Now, let me clarify that it's actually the achievements that are boring, and I have no idea why Naughty Dog put no effort into the achievements, but here's my point. Most of the achievements in the game are collectible related, and I mean most of them. Here are pictures of all 29 achievements that we can unlock. And here are the achievements based on finding collectibles. It's silly. So yeah, I wanted to address this now so that there isn't any confusion about the video and why I'm not unlocking any achievements until more or less the very end. I'm starting to really find collectible achievements annoying. After this and Mirror's Edge Catalyst, uh, there's just a right way and a wrong way to do collectible achievements, but I'll save that for a future video, I think. So with me only playing this game once back when it came out on the PS3, how will I find the remastered version after all this time and having just watched the show? Well, let's get to it and find out by by grinding all 29 achievements that the game has to offer. Also folks, if you're new here and find yourself coming back frequently, please consider subscribing. It would mean a lot. I would really appreciate it and you're coming back anyway, so why not? But without further ado, welcome to the achievement grind. The game starts with Sarah, Joel's daughter, asleep. Joel comes home after a long day, but it turns out that this day should indeed be a day of celebration instead, as it's Joel's birthday. Who needs to party when you've got presents? As Sarah's got him something. A beautiful watch she got by selling hardcore drugs. However, they wind down and Sarah gets put to bed. Once again though, she wakes up in the middle of the night and things aren't exactly right here. The house is silent, there's something on the news about people going insane and Joel is missing. Well, not for long though, as he soon bursts through the doors and goes for his gun. Probably a good idea as a fungal fellow breaks through the doors and immediately gets put down. Sarah is understandably panicked, but thankfully Joel's brother Tommy is here to take them to safety. On the drive there, it's clear that things have gone to smeg. Houses are on fire, people are hitchhiking in the middle of the road, and people are being eaten in the streets. Oh. Damn. Well, guess it's time to go. We speed away, but unfortunately, we don't make it far as we get taken out ourselves. When we awake, we are hurt, so Joel smashes his way out of the wreck. And after getting briefly attacked, we go for Sarah, who has injured a leg. So like the wonderful dad who wouldn't let anything happen to our baby girl, we pick her up and run. The world plunges more into chaos, and honestly, it's beautiful. Not for Joel, though, who must now run away from the infected. We make it to a little restaurant, and Tommy tells us to run. He will fend them off. So that's exactly what we do. Still being chased through, we sprint into nature and that's when we find a wonderful soldier boy that saves us. He cranks that gun and takes care of our unwanted friend and thankfully we are safe. The soldier man calls in about finding unbit survivors on the edge of the city, however it doesn't really go Joel and Sarah's way. Moments away from death, Tommy once again saves Joel but unfortunately Sarah isn't quite as lucky. She was hit with a stray bullet and god the pain she is in is really hard to listen to. The game knows this though, so moments later she dies. I cannot stress to you the mess that I was in when I first played this game. Jesus wept, I was inconsolable. And yeah, this has to be probably one of the most iconic intros to any game, well, ever. But cut to 20 years later, Joel is woken up by Tess sporting some lovely new injuries. A deal they were planning went south. Well, the deal went perfectly itself, but on the way back, Tess was attacked. Now, the attackers don't matter, but a man called Robert sent them. And fortunately, we know where he is hiding. And since this is the second time he double-crossed us, we're going to have a little word with the git. It is then shown that we are in a compound of remaining survivors, with the military running the show. The test the infection on people, execute those that are indeed infected, and pretty much keep us all prisoner here. Hence why a rebellion group called the Fireflies are trying to overthrow them. And I mean overthrow them as moments later we're just about to exit the gate to go and find Robert, explosions happens, and we talk to people. Now this is one of the collectibles talking to people around the game. There will be moments where we can have extra dialogue with characters, and we need to listen to every single one of them. So we start that, but back to the explosion. We run away of course and decide we need an alternate route to get to Robert. And thanks to some friends of Tess, that's exactly what we have, so we set off. And moments into the fresh air of the outside, we find our first achievement actually, as we find a firefly 
Firefly pendant, another form of collectible. We put it in our pocket and unlock Fallen Firefly, and with that, we're on the board. Now, just for some information, there are over 250 collectibles in the game, far more than necessary. But to quickly give you a list of things that we have to collect so that I don't have to mention them every time we find them. So, <clears throat> we need to find documents, Firefly pendants, optional conversations, listen to all jokes, find all saves, find all workbench upgrades, find all workbenches, find all comics, find every hidden door and break into them, and get all of the training manuals. So yeah, there's a lot. Now running through the level we then get to an area overrun by spores, and if we breathe those in we will have a rather nasty fungal infection. So gas masks are needed here and whilst we're going through the spore hotel we find our first infected. Now these are the base infected and there are several levels of infection, this is the first, the generic flesh eating zombie version called the runners. And as you can imagine they're pretty easy to take out, and don't worry we'll get to the other variations soon. For now though we just move through with Tess until we come across a group of street toughs. They give us the big tough guy act and we say that we don't care about them, we just want Robert. He threatens us with nasty words so instead we shoot him with shiny bullets. And we soon dispatch the other thugs with haste. Although I am sorry, I will have to censor a lot of these kills as YouTube will smite me down on mighty smiters. But do you know where you can find the full grind without censorship? My Patreon $5 tier? Go check it out. However, we need to fight our way through more of Robert's guys to get to him and they know we're on our way. Although they don't know how close we actually are as I start to break the of those are standing our way. We fight our way through the entire dock and expertly take care of all the inhabitants with such skill that even John Wick would be proud. And thankfully the bloodshed was not in vain as we find Robert moments later trying to escape. Tess gives him a very kind talking to, and he spills that the guns that we've bought from him he's already sold to other people, and he asks for more time. We then break his arm next so that he tells us that he sold them to the Fireflies. But I suppose we have one more trade in us, as we sell him two bullets and in return he gives us silence. Yeah, Tess killed him, obviously. But speaking of fireflies, one then emerges, and it turns out she is very much an important member, and she's also been shot. We say that we demand our guns, but she says that we can have them all if we do some work for her. She says that she needs our help smuggling somebody out of the city, and with the military inbound, we say take us to the guns. Now, the military is admittedly kicking the Firefly's asses, hence why Marlene is willing to give us this task. On the way to the guns, we smack another couple of people into oblivion, but we don't kill them, of course. We just knock them out. We're not monsters. But we eventually make it to the guns, and good timing as Marlene is not doing so good right now. We open the door and she collapses, but she's got a bodyguard protecting her, a little girl with a butter knife. Now, it turns out that this girl, Ellie, is the goods that we're going to be transporting. We need to take her to the Capitol building, and it's not too close, but she'll give us double the guns that we bought as a reward, and as you can expect, the guns actually are here. So Joel's going to watch over Ellie as Tess goes back to the base with Marlene to check on the guns and to patch herself up, and it turns out that Marlene and Joel know each other as Tommy was with them both in a militia group before they left. We don't like it, but all parties accept. And with that, we have a small child to look after, and there is something that I need to mention here before we move on. So The Last of Us gameplay is pretty much the same throughout the entire game. You work through different levels, solve a couple of puzzles, shooting bad guys in the skull and brain, and of course, killing and meeting the infected. So there isn't much for me to talk about in between cutscenes and the moments with a lot of dialogue. So even though I may be going through this game pretty quickly, once again, I promise you I'm not leaving anything important out. Just the same old generic third person shooter sections. Now, don't get me wrong, they're gorgeous, but they do repeat themselves quite a bit, which is something I noticed a hell of a lot more nearly 10 years later. But just to warn you lovely folks. So with Ellie, we talk about how she knows Marlene and the Fireflies before we reach our home for the evening. Evening. Joel, like the old man he is, immediately has a nice cape and doesn't wake up until later. Now it's night time and Ellie is looking at the rain. It turns out this is apparently the closest to the outside that she has ever been, so she is eating up the sights. But right on cliche Q, Tess returns and she saw the guns and she is very happy. Happy enough to smuggle Ellie away. And since it's night and raining, it sounds like the best time to do it is now. Now, it was great in theory, but it turns out we took the wrong path and Joel gets a good smack to the noggin. The military caught them, so it's time to scan them for infections. Joel and Tess do absolutely fine, but Ellie for some reason thinks that the best plan of action is a slight case of knife knee. We kill the rest because we're Terminators, but it turns out that Ellie is actually infected. Only she's not infected, well, she is, but she's immune. The bite mark that she shows us is three weeks old apparently, but most people, according to Tess, turn within two days, hence Ellie's value. But we don't have time to think right now as the rest of the military come into play. It's pretty intense and it takes us some patience and brains which I am sorely missing, but we get further and further away from the narcs that are chasing us. 
So far indeed that we managed to make it to the sewer line and take it to the edge of the city. Once we're there, we feel like it's time for another heart to heart with our new infected buddy. Tess asks what the plan for all of this is, apparently saying that the Fireflies have a quarantine zone with doctors that are waiting on Ellie's arrival for a potential cure. Joel isn't buying it at all, but Tess sort of is, gullible bastard. Since we're a simp for Tess though, we continue going through with all of this. Time to head to the capsule building. But getting there is going to prove quite the feat, especially with all of these stunning buildings and levels surrounding us. As yeah, the world is absolutely beautiful and it's hard not to comment on it every single time that there's a stunning shot or landscape. The game's just lovely. However, it's time to meet the next type of infected, the clicker. These blind bastards surprise Joel and Tess thankfully takes them out in time. Now, clickers are completely blind and they rely on clicking, hence the name to make out where they're going, like a dolphin. But they also know how to kill, and well, so if they catch you, <laughs> unlucky. Since the clickers are also blind as hell, remember that all it takes is a couple of cheeky bottles thrown to distract them. And when distracting them doesn't work, you know what will work? Grenades. Oh, well, Molotov cocktails. They flame them up right nice and proper, and we get to move on. Eventually, the next morning, though, we thankfully make it to the steps of the Capitol building. Only once again, something isn't right. Everybody is dead inside. The Fireflies have had their light snuffed out. Tess panics about what to do next, but Joel is defeated and ready to call it a day. Although something's wrong with Tess, and she's says that this is our last stop, as Tess is now infected. The clicker scuffle from earlier got the better of her and she has been bit, and her infection is already looking worse than Ellie's, proving that it's probably real and Ellie may indeed be the reason for a cure. Tess then says that the next step for us is to go and fight Tommy, but before we can hatch a plan further, the military arrives and Tess decides to stay behind whilst we and Ellie get lost. Moments later, we hear screaming and when we re-emerge, Tess is dead, and so are all of the military that we take down with us as well. There are more than we can handle, though, so we just sprint into the sewers and the place is infested with spores. So while we need a gas mask, Ellie's immunity is proven further with the fact that she doesn't need one and can breathe the spores in as merrily as she wants. This is also the section where we find out that Ellie can't swim, so when the path forward is rather damp, we have to use a pallet to transport her to safety, and this happens a couple of times throughout the game. If only we could teach her to swim, maybe one day. For now, we make it back to the surface again, and Ellie goes to apologise about Tess, but Joel has other plans. No mentioning Tess, all their histories, no telling anybody about Ellie's immunity, and Joel's the boss and makes the rules, so time to head to one of Joel's old friends for some help in these trying times. And then we jump cut to the outskirts of said town once again. Now, one of the more shocking moments in this playthrough that I don't remember in the original is when Ellie decided to grow a beard. <laughs> yeah, the joys of a day one steam launch, am I right? Now, this town section is a treat to go through. A slight change of scenery is great, and throughout the game, we will have conversations with Ellie that really help build the characters up more and more. However, it appears that we are getting close to our friend as we start to run into booby traps that are set up everywhere. We dodge them all fairly well, except for the one. The one that admittedly has us looking at the game with a different perspective. We have to shoot the smeg out of things whilst Ellie frees us from this fridge trap, and to be honest, blasting skulls upside down is certainly a lot of fun. However, Ellie eventually frees us, but it's another close call as another infected attacks. Thankfully, once again though, we are saved by the friend that we're here to see. Bill, a grumpy survivalist with a knack for sarcastic comments. Sounds like somebody I know. But once away from the horde, it's time for the proper introductions. And by that, I mean Bill handcuffs Ellie and threatens us. However, Bill underestimates Ellie as she soon breaks free and pipes him down a level. He's not happy, especially when we say that we need a car and his help getting one. But in true game fashion, he of course changes his mind and decides to help us. And since I mentioned Bill's a survivalist, he helps us even more with our next achievement as well. As on his bar is a training manual that helps him improve some skills and effectiveness of the weapons that we carry, but by picking it up, it unlocks us the next achievement, self-help. Two down, 27 ago. Jesus. Moments later, we make it to another safe house where we stock up on gear and have a quick discussion on why Joel is doing this for Ellie. It's nothing that we haven't said before, so we gear up and go. Again, folks, nothing really to say here about the journey as it's fairly rinse and repeat from the last sections, but we basically need to make it to a school so that we can steal a car battery. And boom, we're there. We decimate the horde of infected outside with Tomb Raider precision before once again there is a couple more infected than we can really take care of and decide to run away instead. Once again, it's a close call, but we make it inside. There is a problem though. The battery's gone, like totally nicked. So time to run again. We make it throughout the school looking for a way out and this is where we meet the next infected. As we enter the gym, a bloater makes his appearance. Now bloaters are absolute tanks that have been infected for years and years. They can rip you apart limb from limb and also throw spore bombs at you. So of course it's time to put this 
beefy fecker down. After a couple of minutes and with some well placed shots to the face it does indeed go down. Definitely a fun fight but now it's time to leave and put the school behind us. We make it to a house next door and come up with a new plan. Although there is a corpse hanging from a ceiling and the corpse is Frank. Frank was Bill's partner. He was bit but Bill honestly isn't listening and his death is obviously affecting him. And it turns out he has a heart after all. Not only a heart though as in the garage is a car and it's got some juice. So Bill fixes it up whilst we explore Frank's house. In here we also find Frank's suicide note which we deliver to Bill. And after a quick glance Bill's read enough and throws it away. But here we get our next achievement for picking it back up. We take the crumpled ball of pain and unlock in memoriam. But to get the car going we need to give it the good old fashioned push. Infected run towards us because of course they do. It couldn't just be easy for once. But we still rough their jimmies up and get the car pushed to a wonderful start. We hop in the back and Ellie for some reason who is driving floors it away. Later that day it's time to part ways with Bill. We hop out, say our goodbyes and get back onto the open road. On the road, Ellie and Joel bond more over nostalgic music and nudie magazines before they arrive in another part of town. A man jumps in front of the car begging for help but Joel sees right past this and they get jumped. It goes as well as it can until a bus takes us out and we crash into a nearby shop. Ellie gets attacked so we kindly attack the attacker, but more are on the way and we need to play it smart. By playing it smart, we mean rip and tear our way through the entire mob as it is us and Ellie who come out victorious. Journeying through the level we also find our next achievement for finding the first Savage Starlight comic. We pick it up for Ellie and unlock Savage Starlight fan. We carry on making it further throughout the town killing nasty pasty bastards with all of the tools available to us. And would you believe it folks, we have yet here another achievement as well. For crafting one of every craftable item in the game we unlock the achievement geared up. Look at that, we're starting to make a dent in the achievements, but most of them will come later. So back to moving forward. We eventually make it inside a hotel and after climbing a lift we get separated from Ellie which isn't ideal. To be honest this fall should have probably done a lot more damage to Joel but I guess he's assembled uniquely. However we need to get back to Ellie ASAP. We fight our way through the lower levels of the hotel dealing with clickers, runners and even another bloater who decides to join the party. But that's nothing to us. Now infected are easy but when we go to climb a ladder a human gets the better of us. He smacks us into a puddle and goes to give us if anything too much to drink. With time running out we are once again saved as Ellie finds us, picks up the gun in the water and shoots the guy in the head. And she doesn't handle the fact that she's just killed somebody very well. Now Joel is very angry about the situation but we go to move on once again. We make it outside and with a huge group of bandits ahead we trust Ellie with a bigger gun. The idea is that she snipes while we're down there taking care of them, so we teach her how to use the gun and go to take care of this human infestation. It goes surprisingly well and Ellie somehow doesn't take our brain for a walk. All of the humans down here get a horrid case of not breathing and we start to trust Ellie a little bit more, even giving her a gun of her own, finally. But walking through we see how far these humans will go in making sure that their gang are the only ones. As roaming about they have a beefy car with a lot of upgrades and they are killing anybody that they don't know. Apparently looking for two people who betrayed them and are on the run. Moments later that scary car finds us and even though they couldn't hit us a single time we think it's still best to run away. We do just that and eventually lose it. But when we hop back through a window to safety it turns out that we are far from safe as we get attacked by another human. However this man's got a pretty decent bodyguard too. It takes a second but both parties realise that neither are the enemy. And this is Henry and Sam, the two people that the raiders were looking for who betrayed them. Deciding that this group can only be stronger together we set off as a unit to get out of this hellhole and it turns out they can hold their own as well which is very nice. We fight through hordes of humans and fun guys before we decide to wait until night time to make our escape as the gate to freedom is heavily guarded. But at night it's a skeleton crew and will be much easier to overrun. Here we also have our next achievement as well. As by silently killing everybody and avoiding the massive spotlight we press forward and once we're able to turn off the spotlight without alerting anybody to our presence we unlock the next achievement lights out. We death the rest of them all and go to leave. Whilst escaping though this is when the twisted metal Mad Max car comes back with a vengeance. Joel can't make it up since the ladder breaks on him so Ellie hops down and once again we're in it together. But since the car can't shoot for Smeg we make it another way. We head to the bridge and decide that the best bet is to just jump off even though Ellie can't swim. Somehow though we make it once again. We are the luckiest a human has ever gotten. We wake up on the beach and get reunited with Sam and Henry. Now the only way through is through another disgusting sewer system. Now again nothing really here to note except our next achievement. As when we get this contraption working to get everybody across a large gap, when we ride it with Sam and Henry we unlock the achievements waterlogged. An interesting achievement choice but it is what it is and we've got it now. We don't take long though and we're out of the sewers rather quickly in another part of the town. And in this town we actually have two more achievements as well. The first 
best is for fully upgrading a weapon. We chose the pistol and once it's fully done we unlock combat ready and in this town is also our final safe. We pop the lock, take its juicy contents from it and unlock the next achievement for cracking them all, sticky fingers. However of course we are soon overrun by the infected again and barely get away. We celebrate our near death experience with some beans and bonding. Now we get quite close with Sam and Henry and even decide that they're going to join us on the trip to Tommy's cause why not, they're nice when they don't leave us for dead that is. Now it's time for some shut eye and we can crack on again in the morning, which comes rather soon. We wake up and since food is cooking, Ellie goes to wake Sam up to join us for the delicious bean breakfast. But there's another problem, Sam has turned. Apparently in a scuffle with the infected earlier, he got bit. And since he's attacking Ellie, Henry has to put him down. Henry of course is distraught and doesn't know how to react. To be honest, this scene again really hurts to watch. I mean, look at his face, goddammit. It hurts even more when Henry decides to join his brother though. Yeah, this game has such heavy and light moments. It's truly insane on how this game can make you feel. Anyway, let's move on. We cut to fall next and we are of course with Ellie making our way closer to Tommy. The first obstacle in this path is a dam and another swimming section. Now how we get past this isn't important, but do you know what is important? Achievements! Except this is one that I really don't want to earn, as by using teamwork we complete the puzzle but unfortunately have to not accept a crisp high five. I'm so sorry. Really? Just gonna leave me hanging? I'm so sorry. Let's see how it we is. got an achievement. Just high five. Just five seconds. Let me high five you. <laughs> Do it again. Do it again. Hurting Ellie's feelings unlocked as the next achievement left hanging. Stupid game. However, seconds later, we arrive at a big gate and when we go to try to open it to go through, we are greeted with guns. Wonderful. Whilst haggling with the door lady for our lives, a familiar face opens the gate. And just like that, we are reunited with our brother. And it also turns out that the door lady is Tommy's wife and we wasn't even invited to the wedding, honestly. However, our lack of wedding invitation aside, we head on into the complex and are introduced to a lot of amazing things lost in a ravenous world. First, some majestic steeds, then some wonderful electricity, and most importantly, they have a good boy. This is Buckley, and our love for Buckley only grows as when we pet this amazing puppy, we unlock our next achievement, who's a good boy? And it's Buckley. Buckley's the good boy. Later on, we decide to have a chat with Tommy. Not so much the catching up kind, more that I know I haven't seen you in 10 years kind, but I need a favour. We immediately tell Tommy about Ellie's immunity, even though that goes against Joel's own rules but we need gear and a place to go and we want Tommy to take Ellie off our hands. Now, Tommy isn't happy about this whatsoever, but he says that he can get the gear, but he isn't taking her. We have a little bit of a sibling squabble, but during this miniature problem, a bigger one happens and bandits raid the camp. Luckily, Joel Wick is here to carve out some faces and we quickly shoot our way back to Ellie and Maria. But after seeing Ellie, Tommy has a change of heart and decides that he can indeed take her. Maria isn't happy, of course, and she storms off threatening Joel on the way like a good wife does. But Tommy will take Ellie to the Fireflies. Slight problem with that though, Ellie's run off. Or horsed off, should I say. She doesn't get very far and we soon find her alive at a farm. And we go to have a stern word with this little horse bandit. They have a little squabble as Ellie is fed up with people abandoning her. And Joel's the only one who hasn't. But it turns out that Tommy's wife Maria told her about Sarah. And Ellie plays the I'm not Sarah card. Brave move, Cotton. Let's see how it works out. And this scene, I also want to point out the genius writing of the game. With every dilemma and decision, for the most part, you completely understand both sides. And here, technically, both of them are right. So it makes it incredibly gripping when the stories develop in this way. We love well written characters, but Tommy breaks into the room saying that bandits have followed them here. The only thing that they have won is a bullet to the cranium. We defeat them and get back on the horses and go to find the lab that Tommy points out. Also stunning scenery again, my god. But it turns out that the Sarah card worked wonderfully as Joel decides to send Tommy back and to not leave Ellie. Right call Joel. That's the right call. Joel and Tommy say the goodbyes with Tommy saying that when they're done to go back to him. And with that, Ellie and Joel are back on the road by themselves. We then arrive at the university that Tommy told us about and we make it into the lab and science area. It is totally abandoned and there isn't a firefly in sight. This is confirmed when we make it to a recording saying just that. Saying that all of the fireflies have moved out of the hospital a while ago. Oh, but wait, this place isn't abandoned. There's somebody local. Unfortunately though, it isn't anybody good and we need to escape back to the horse that we can hit the 
Old Town Road and ride till we can't no more. <laughs> Such a stupid joke, I'm sorry. Now, we make it through the waves of goons rather well, but one of them surprises us, and when we get knocked over the railing, Joel lands on some metal. And honestly, that's not the best for his health. Ellie helps him get back on his feet, but he isn't on those loafers for long. It's good timing though, as when Joel falls over, somebody is stealing our horse. Ellie puts him down and we hop on the horse for a daring escape. Now, Joel's injuries catch up with him pretty quickly though, and even though they lose the bandits, Joel decides that this is the perfect time for a road nap. And then we cut to Winter, and Winter opens with, well, with this. That is the cutest fucking thing I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. But now, of course, we take control of Ellie, but notice some bigger game in the distance in the form of a deer. Now, I don't mean to butter my own ass at all, but I am insane with the bow. Here, watch. Let's go! <laughs> I just don't miss. I simply do not miss. So when the deer is on its last legs, we chase it through and find the poor bastard. However, we're not the only one after a slice of that as two men appear. This is David and James. They're from a group and wondering if they can trade some things for some of that delicious deer meat. We say that we need medicine and James goes to get it whilst Ellie and David look over the deer. It seems fair and David agrees. We both huddle around a fire and decide to have some very awkward small talk. Thankfully, it doesn't take that long as a group of infected save us from the terrible conversation. Unfortunately, after the horde is killed though, we do talk some more. Now, this is where things get awkward, but in a totally different way. He says that a group of his friends went to go look for some food when they were all killed by a crazy man who had a little girl with him. Tensions rise as James return and we take the medicine and leave. Back at a safe house in the basement, Joel is asleep and struggling. However, this wonderful medicine will hopefully set him on the right path to recovery. After all, Joel's in good hands as Ellie somehow has already stitched him up as well. Ellie huddles down next to him and they both get some shut eye. In the morning though, they are rudely awoken by more men, David's men, here to find them both. Now knowing Joel isn't in any mood for movement, Ellie decides to draw them away from the house with some grand theft horse. It works wonderfully and all of the terribly talented men and fail at stopping us, except for one. The horse gets shot and we are flung off, but horse down or not, it doesn't mean that we stop, so we carry on running. We expertly kill all of the men ahead of us and make it to a hotel. When we go to exit through though, the dreaded David returns. He chokes us out, but saying that he's actually keeping us alive by doing this. And I don't know about you folks, but I'm convinced. But he must have plans as we awake in a cage, we're caught in a trap and we can't walk out. However, us in a cage isn't the most disturbing thing that we see, as James the gent from earlier seems to be preparing some meat, but not the deer that we caught. David then re-enters with some scran, and surprisingly we eat it. Ellie worries about being chopped up into tiny little pieces, yet David only wants to know her name. Apparently, he is very interested in letting her stay with the group. Maybe a little too interested. Yeah, Ellie is smelling what the disgusting pig is selling, though, and decides to break his fingers instead. <laughs> Go on, Ellie. Of course, David now knows that he's going to have to kill us, so he goes away to plan it. For now, though, we go back to Joel. He suddenly wakes up, still in pain mind, but conscious. Time to go and save Ellie. Now, there are still some of David's men around the house looking for Joel. Well, they found him, so we knock two of them out and take them for some questions. He begins his interrogation tactics with a knife in the kneecap, and to be honest, that would get me talking. He gives in pretty quickly, saying that Ellie is going to become, in his words, David's newest pet. Fecking gross. He marks the location on a map and Joel quite rightly kills both of the men before going in for the save. Back with Ellie, David and Jason grab her from a cage and throw her on the table to become some deli meat. However, Ellie bites David on the way, then screaming that she's infected. And she's got the bite to prove it, so now David must be infected too. Distracted by the fungus though, Ellie then takes the time to take the cleaver and plant it rather neatly in Jason's neck, before grabbing her knife and fleeing. Now a rather convenient snowstorm hits, so after we take care of a couple more guys, we go to hide inside the city's diner. This is unfortunately where David makes his return as well. He bursts through the door and knocks over a lamp immediately starting a fire. In the confusion, he loses us, but we're done running. It's time to end this and more importantly, end David. We get a couple of great stabs into him as the building gets more and more engulfed in flames. With one final stab, he falls over and we both get knocked out somehow. Back with Joe, we slowly make it through the snowstorm ourselves, closer and closer to saving Ellie. And moments later, he is outside the burning diner. Back with Ellie, they both grab their bearings at the same time. However, David gets the upper hand. He says that it's fine to give up, but he doesn't know who he's dealing with. He gets on top of Ellie, but now we've had enough of this smegger. So we take the machete he didn't see and absolutely 
absolutely mulch David into pieces in probably my favourite shot of the entire game. Just on cue though, Joel finds Ellie and well, this happens. Okay, it's me, it's me, it's me. Look, look. Call her baby girl. It's me. Call her it. He tried to... Ah. <laughs> he said the thing. God damn, this scene hits hard. As I said, this scene is probably my favourite in the game too. The music, the acting, the graphics, this just sums up everything amazing about the game and why people love it in my opinion. This scene is just perfect and in my eyes it makes Joel and Ellie realise how badly that they need each other. It's beautiful. But cut to spring. Joel and Ellie are still travelling together and we're getting closer to the hospital where hopefully the fireflies are. It's clear that also Ellie is not okay. She's quiet, she's distant and just simply miles away. Understandably of course. However, something soon grabs her interest and I don't blame her at all as we spot some tall African horses. Who would have thought? Well, we share a moment with them before we have another chat. Joel says to Ellie that if she just wants to, we can go back to Tommy's and forget everything and just be happy. Ellie, however, says that they can't go through all of that just to give up at the final hurdle, and says that it needs to be done. Afterwards, she'll go wherever Joel wants. And folks, thankfully we're going to be ticking off some achievements here now. The first is for us arriving at a medical camp and finding the last of the workbench upgrade tools, unlocking us sharpest tool in the shed. During a small horde fight, we also find the last training manual on top of a lorry, and picking it up unlocks us something to fight for. We have another swimming section where we also find the last workbench in the game as well, and using it unlocks us prepared for the worst. And being able to slowly tick off all of these collectible achievements just felt great. However, something goes wrong. Joel and Ellie cross over a bus, but even though she makes it, we don't, and we fall inside the bus as it slowly starts to get washed away. Ellie, being the incredible mad lad, hops on to try and help us. However, she also falls in. We escape and find her floating lifelessly in the water, so we race to save her and pull her out but she isn't breathing. We start to give her CPR, but whilst we do that, two men come and tell us to put our hands up. Since we don't as we're prioritising Ellie's life right now, we get knocked out instead. When Joel wakes up, Marlene is there to greet him. Apparently, the men didn't know that it was Ellie and Joel, and Marlene says how impressed that she is that we actually made it all this way. However, we're not allowed to see Ellie, apparently, as she's being prepped for surgery. Now, apparently, Ellie's got inside her a mutated version of the cordyceps. It's why she's immune. So, they have to remove it, so once they remove it, they'll be able to make a vaccine and indeed have a cure. One problem though, the cordyceps infects the brain and by removing it, it would in fact kill Ellie. It's her life or the cure. Joel instantly makes the decision that he can't lose somebody again and we get a dead leg for our thanks. Marlene understands us though as she has known Ellie since birth. It's a tricky situation, but the life of one outweighing humanity? Who knows? Joel's not happy, but we did our job so it's time to be escorted out. It doesn't go Marlene's way though of course because we're fecking Joel Miller. So the person who is escorting us out gets a delicious dose of broken nose and some fancy new bullet holes. He tells us that the surgery room is on the top floor so let's go and save Ellie. Now, more fireflies come to stop our vendetta, but of course they get introduced to the afterlife. But who cares about how many bodies we send to their graves as we have another a couple of achievements to unlock. First, for using the shiv to break the final door, we unlock Master of Unlocking. Rather topical if you ask me. But inside is our final firefly pendant as well. And for collecting all 30 in the game, we unlock the next achievement, Look for the Light. Oh, this feels good now. Now, achievements aside, we fight until we reach the surgery room on the top floor. The lead doctor comes to stop us, so, well, this happens. I won't let you take her. This is our future. Think of all the lives we'll save. Well. No! There's one life that could have been saved if you'd just minded your tongue. Jerry, shut the hell up. Yeah, you know what you're talking about. Jesus. Oh, God. Uh, just, just take the girl and leave. I absolutely okay. shall. We pick up Ellie in the middle of her nap and go to leave this hellhole and save her life, at the cost of everyone else. 
It's clear here that Joel is the villain, but again, I get why he's doing it. It's another tough decision where I understand both sides, but we make it to the car park. However, Marlene has expected us to come this way and she is there to greet us. She makes some fantastic points that if Ellie dies anytime soon, then she is gone and so is the cure. And with surgery, it will at least be painless and, you know, save humanity. But the next shot has us driving away with Ellie in the back seat. We took her back and she is alive and now awake. She asks us what happened and Joel lies and says that we found the fireflies and they had a ton of immune people there as well. So, not only is Ellie not the only one apparently, but Joel lies and says that the research just wasn't working so they've actually stopped looking for a cure. A cutaway shows that Joel did in fact execute Marlene, knowing that she would come for them. In the next shot, Ellie and Joel are walking towards Tommy's town again, and on the way we also find our final comic book and more importantly, the next achievement, Endure and Survive. However, when we're more or less there, Ellie stops Joel. She says that when she was bitten originally, her best friend was there, also getting bit herself. So they waited out and wanted to lose their minds together. She lost Riley that day as her turn never came. Ellie makes Joel swear to her that everything he said about the hospital is true. Joel swears, but he hesitates and Ellie says, okay. And that's the end of The Last of Us. We also unlock the next achievement, no matter what, for completing it. And my lord, what a story that is. It's hard to sum up why without just repeating what myself and countless other people have already said about the game, but we're actually not done, folks, as we have a small DLC chapter to go through as well before we can finally cross this game off the list. So we start Left Behind. It starts with Ellie asleep in her bed pre-infection, and someone bursts into her room and pretends to bite her. This is Riley. It's been months since they've seen each other as Ellie is with the military and Riley is left to join the Fireflies, and Riley just abandoned Ellie. With Ellie Ellie then assuming that Riley was dead. Riley says that she's got a surprise for Ellie, but they're going to have to sneak out and go see it. Now, this is intercut with extra bits we didn't see during Joel's injury section, including patching up his rather nasty wound. But it's not enough. She needs proper medical supplies as duct tape simply just won't cut the mustard on this one. God, I really hope that Joel makes it. Anyway, we start as Ellie looking for those supplies, and she makes it to a big shopping centre to look for something. After walking through a bit and taking care of some of the rather funky residents, we spot a military helicopter that's crashed into the roof, and there might be some medical supplies on board there. Now, we cut to Ellie with Riley. We make it across the rooftops in the rain and conveniently drop down into a shopping centre as well. Now, Ellie and Riley have been here before, but not like this. So it's time for them to kick back and have some fun. They drink, they talk, and they also let themselves into a Halloween costume shop. We spend a little time here messing around with different masks, making jokes, and you know the rest. However, it's time for a game. Riley spots two cars and challenges us. Whoever can use bricks to break all of the windows on their respective car, they will win the reward of being able to ask the other person a question, and they have to answer it completely honestly. Now, Riley doesn't realise that I'm actually a dab hand with bricks, as I've been using them pretty well throughout the game so far. <laughs> so make of that what you will. But we smash our windows very easily and win, unlocking the next achievement, Brickmaster. Now, Ellie's question is why did Riley leave without telling Ellie? Riley says that she was just in a weird space and didn't really tell anybody, but Ellie's still upset with that as she feel like she wasn't just anybody to Riley. However, Riley then just essentially dodges the question, but I'm sure we'll find out more later. Now, the surprise is that Riley knows that the shopping centre still has power, so we power it up and everything turns on. But before we walk back through, Ellie says that she is so happy that Riley is alive and that they are finally together again. But, surprise time. They open the door and the entire place is beautifully lit up. So lit up though that it looks like I've been flashbang as we return to current version Ellie. We make it more throughout the level, killing clickers in the pursuit of health and soon make it to the chopper and jump straight in. Joel better thank us for this, I swear to God. But thankfully, it was worth it as the medical box on there is full of everything we need to sew up those disgusting rotten wounds. Back with Riley, they open the doors and yeah, it's stunning. We hop on the carousel together, but when it runs out of juice, Riley gives us a rather familiar book. It's Ellie's pun book, and it's brilliant. We go through every joke in that book with Riley that we haven't heard and get our next achievement. That's all I got for listening to every joke possible. We're really getting there now, folks. 
We mess around in the shop some more, including a rather sweet photo booth section, and more importantly, another achievement, as when we listen to every single optional dialogue in the game, we unlock getting to know you. Now it's time to head to the arcade of course, and inside there we also find a little easter egg, as there is a Jack X console here. We hop inside and mimic us destroying the competition, also unlocking us the next achievement, nobody's perfect. Now unfortunately none of the arcade machines actually work, but since there's a fighting game there that Ellie really wanted to play, Riley decides to set the scene and to still get her to play it by simply d and the experience. Now for this we do have some quick time events. And by kicking Black Fang's ass without losing a pixel of make-believe health, we also unlock another achievement, Angel Knives. Jobs are good'un. This is unfortunately also the time where Riley says that this is the last time that they're going to see each other, as she is moving away with the Fireflies tomorrow to head to Boston. She said that she wants to stay, but apparently it's out of her control. Ellie pretends to be cool, but she's not. They have a moment as Ellie gets confused by all of this, and they have a bit of a falling out. We chase after her and eventually catch up to her though. Riley then has another surprise for us. Ellie has dreamt of having a water gun fight, and Riley was able to find two, so we put the tiff on the side and get ready to have the greatest water fight of all time. Only problem for Riley though is that I've got Jill's pigeon instincts, which means that I can shoot her wherever I damn well please. We cheat until eventually we get the victory once again, and unlock the next achievement skills. Ellie afterwards tells Riley that she should go because it's what she's always wanted and Ellie doesn't want her to stop that, even though she apparently is the one person who could stop Riley. They go to leave and return home but with one final stop, music. Now not the smartest move with an infection apocalypse around, but they start filling the shopping centre with music and having a little bit of a dance. Ellie then plucks up the courage though and begs Riley not to go. Riley agrees, rips her dog tags off and says that she will stay for Ellie, before Ellie then kisses her. With no idea on what to do now, they decide to figure it out later. But the music then immediately bites us in the ass, as infected appear to bite us in the ass. Back with modern Ellie, she adds the medicine to a backpack and goes to get the hell out of there. However, of course some bandits have arrived to make things much trickier. But with the infected and bandits together, we might be able to make something of this. First, however, is our next achievement. An event system for finding the last and every document in the game. For doing so, we unlock Chronicles. And that wraps up every collectible achievement in the game, and my god, I was so happy about getting this. Thankfully though, the next achievement is only moments away as well. As when we throw a brick at a bandit and lost some clickers their way, we unlock the next achievement live bait. We make it past the bandits as our aim is just simply better somehow, so we open a shutter and go to leave this place, before it immediately cuts back to Riley and Ellie again running away from an army of the infected. We climb some scaffolding but it breaks away from us and we fall back down. An infected jumps us and Riley saves us before she gets jumped herself. We then save her back and thankfully that seems to be the infected dealt with. Only one problem though, our sleeve got wet. And yes, it's a visual bug, it's meant to show us the bite of course, however it shows us a sleeve. But from Ellie's conversation with Joel earlier, we also know that Riley got bit too. But fecker bite, what about my damp sleeves bro? Ellie breaks a lot of stuff over a soggy sleeve and she breaks down. We know the option that they go to take, they decide to sit there and just to lose their minds together. It then shows Ellie fixing Joel up with Riley talking in the background. She then sets off on a horse with a Joel sled and the final shot is Riley and Ellie together ready for the infection to take them both over. And that's left behind. For completing the DLC we unlock the next achievement, don't go. And with that folks we only have one achievement left to go. And it's fairly simple. Now in the base game there are melee weapons. Now the achievement that I missed all I have to do is find a machete, craft an upgrade to make it even more lethal somehow, and then break it on an enemy. Dead simple. Even though we messed it up a tiny bit by walking past the machete once, we reloaded it, found it, upgraded it, and broke it over the bastard skull of a stalker, and unlocked the achievement, build them up, break them down, and forgetting every other achievement in the game we also unlock, it can't be for nothing. And with that folks, we finally have every collectible collected, every achievement got, and with that, that means the grind is over. Now, The Last of Us is a game I always held very close to me. It's of course universally one of the most praised games of all time, and replaying the remastered version, it totally deserves that spot. The music, the characters, the story, the level design, absolutely everything is damn near perfect. Except for one thing, the combat. Now, don't get me wrong, the combat is not bad at all, but it is extremely average and repetitive, hence why it was hard to talk about what happened in between the cutscenes. Now, to be fair to Naughty Dog, I'm not sure how it could have been anything different, 
different as it perfectly fits the game. But playing this version, I was very much more aware on how rinse and repeat every section of the game was. Still again though, not bad, but yeah, something I hope that they improve on with the sequel. Now honestly, I don't know what else I can say about the game that hasn't already been said. This is probably one of the best stories written in a game and every single ounce of praise this game gets, it deserves. It's simply fantastic. The achievements were such a letdown for me that they didn't test me in any capacity other than collect a billion little things that quite frankly I couldn't give a toss about. This game could have had amazing achievements to really test the player and to make us try different things in different ways, but we didn't get that. Hell, even the achievements we got for non-collectible related challenges were just boring and shite. So yeah, really not a fan of the achievements in this game at all. And it's a good job that the game itself was so good or this would have been a much more of a slog to go through. Come on, Naughty Dog, I expect better from you. But enough of that, let's get to the stats. For The Last of Us, it took us just over 20 hours to collect all 29 achievements. I'm going to be giving this game an incredible 9.5 out of 10, and I only have to take half a point off for the combat system. Sorry, I know it may seem harsh, but that was my only real complaint about the game itself. So yeah, I actually am really looking forward to seeing the controversial take on part 2. Now as well, a little favour as well folks, I haven't actually played part 2 before, and surprisingly I haven't had a single spoiler for it. So please, I'm begging you, please no spoilers for part 2 in the comments, I'll be so gutted. So yeah, thank you very much. And you can expect part 2 being covered soon. For difficulty of the achievements though, I'm going to be giving this a 3 out of 10. There's nothing really here that will test you, but the sheer amount of collectibles that you have to get make this a little bit difficult to go through, as you have to collect a lot of different things so a guide is more or less essential for it. For most difficult achievement, I suppose I'm going to give it to Chronicles, as that's the one with the most collectibles related to the achievement. But folks, that is it from me today. Make sure that you come back on Sunday, however, as we are going to be tackling a game that echoes my childhood and my nostalgia for it is simply through the roof. We're going to be tackling the original Ratchet and Clank. Now, how will the first trophy grind fare? Well, a lot more challenging than you might imagine, so make sure that you tune in for that very soon. And folks, once again, thank you all so much for watching. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, consider swinging by my Twitch as well, as we do the Achievement Grinds live as well there, and are currently playing some rather fantastic games, so come check it out. Also, a massive thanks again to all of my incredible patrons. Your support means so much to me, and I really, really thank you for it. But I've rambled on enough as it is, folks. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye for now.